USA. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, in, uh, introduction and uh, for the very kind uh, invitation to speak here. Uh, the cranial epigastric veins is the anatomic term for the milk vein, so I'll probably use milk vein uh, because that's something that we're more used to talking about. Uh, but this uh, study really dealt with exactly the same uh, subject matter as the previous presentation is why do cows get utter edema at calving? Why is it worst in heifers? And why does it disappear? So uh, it's very common in first calving cattle, particularly dairy cattle, although you will occasionally see it in beef cattle. Uh, it is uh, first visible three weeks before parturition, seems to peak right around parturition, uh, and then is usually resolved by three weeks after parturition. Uh, but as uh, the previous presenter and I have stated, the mechanism is really unknown. And here is a very good summary picture from Tucker, uh, who really developed a very nice scoring system looking at utter edema score. Zero is no edema. Ten is you could not imagine any more severe edema. And you'll see that it rises up, peaks right around parturition, uh, and then declines. So this decline is interesting because uh, if you don't have an untreated control group, any intervention that you give after calving will improve edema score because that's what's going to happen. So what is our hypothesis? Well, uh, my PhD is in cardiovascular physiology, uh, really focusing on blood flow. Uh, and I've felt for many years that utter edema is primarily due to an obstruction to drainage of venous flow uh, to the mam from the mammary gland. Uh, and that's particularly associated with this marked increase in mammary gland blood flow through the artery that happens at parturition. Uh, if you get into the anatomy of uh, drainage of the mammary gland, uh, it's been very contentious for 100 years. Uh, but it looks like there is some sort of agreement that uh, is now taking place. One is that they're really, the mammary gland is really only drained by two areas. Uh, one is the external, external pudendic vein that goes through the inguinal uh, canal. And the other one is the milk vein uh, that enters through the thorax. And although this is also uh, contentious, the most recent estimate is 90% of the drainage is by the milk veins and 10% is by the epigastric veins when the cow is standing. What is interesting is when the cow lies down, this is further compressed, so therefore most of the drainage is actually through the external uh, pudendic vein. So there is an impact on whether the cow is standing or not. Uh, probably uh, the best work on this was done by Linzel. Uh, for the uh, younger people in the audience, a lot of great work was done 50 to 80 years ago. I'd really encourage uh, to read it. This is a classic paper from 1960. And in multipyrus cattle, it sort of defined the mammary veins as draining the mammary gland in this direction with most of the valves of the veins now being incompetent because the vein diameter has got too large. So the real question is, is it different in younger animals? And uh, very interesting developmental work showed that actually in young calves before puberty, the mammary vein, this is actually not connected at all in that the cranial epigastric vein is not connected to the mammary gland but just drains the anterior to the umbilicus, uh, and then caudal to the umbilicus, it's drained into the mammary vein, then mostly out through the external pudendal uh, vein. So what happens from about six months, and particularly once the cows are pregnant and then uh, developing an udder for lactation, uh, these actually anastomose and blood flow reverses, so it starts going uh, in this direction. This takes many months for it to happen. So we were interested in determining the association between utter edema score as defined by Tucker and the cross-sectional area of the milk vein. 
and the blood flow within the milk vein and the effect of parity on those two measurements. Uh, so we got our uh, very happy, healthy Holstein heifers and older cows. We scored the extent of utter edema using Tucker's zero to 10 scoring system. Uh, the highest score that we score actually was eight in these 106 animals that we studied. And this is an example of quite severe utter edema with a score of six. As you can see, we've got extensive pitting edema extending almost all the way up to the brisket and starting to extend uh, right up to the perineal region. So what was new about this study that doesn't appear to have been done before is that we ultrasounded the milk vein. Uh, so this was an observational longitudinal cohort study for the epidemiologists. We used a convenient sample. Uh, we have data from 106, but I'm only going to uh, uh, present data from about 50 of them right here. 14 were first lactation, 12 were second lactation, and 24 were third or greater lactation. Uh, and then we measured uh, the dimensions and the blood flow using B mode and Doppler uh, from uh, daily, from day three before parturition to day two after parturition. And you get really high quality images if you use a five or six megahertz transducer. What we can see right here, here is the transducer. This is the milk vein in longitudinal section. And here is a valve that is no longer competent uh, because the uh, vein is much more distended and the vein does not grow uh, in uh, association with that. This has some similarities to varicose veins uh, in humans. Uh, so uh, here is uh, one of a heifer and you can see tremendous edema formation between the skin and the actual milk vein and this will increase the pressure around the milk vein and probably have a tendency uh, to collapse it. Uh, and this was an utter edema score of six. Uh, and then on the right panel, we've got a very severe uh, heifer with utter edema uh, and that extended uh, for 6.5 centimeters. Probably this is the take home uh, image for you to remember about what's going on with these mammary veins. This is a heifer Primarily looks like it's circular uh, and uh, probably with a diameter you might want to estimate about 1.3 centimeters. Uh, and then this is about a four-year-old cow and you can see that it's now moved into an ellipse uh, with a, uh, at least a, this axis of the ellipse uh, being at about uh, one, two, you can say 2.5 centimeters and obviously uh, the long axis of the ellipse uh, is greater. Uh, and then you can, uh, this is in cross-sectional, you can look at this longitudinally and try and get a velocity gate in the middle of the vessel, hopefully at 60 degrees. Uh, our velocity measurements are a fraction uh, overestimated because our mean uh, gate uh, angle was 67 degrees, which artificially uh, increases uh, the uh, speed of blood uh, that's measured. So let's look at some summary data right here. Utter edema score for older cows, uh, they do increase and then uh, right around parturition and then decrease, but they are much, much lower than first lactation cows that do increase and then decrease after parturition with second lactation cows being uh, intermediate. And if you look at the cranial uh, epigastric vein or milk vein area, uh, you can see that that does increase as we start getting into lactogenesis, as blood flow continues to increase to the mammary gland to drive that level of milk production. Uh, that's particularly evident here in the three plus uh, lactation cows. Uh, we weren't able to detect much change over parturition in second lactation cows or first lactation cows. Here is the time that they uh, calved and here is our measurement time relative to the time of calving. But you can see that the, the cross-sectional area is just markedly reduced uh, in heifers versus older cows. The blood flow velocity as measured by Doppler did increase as you would expect with increased blood flow to the mammary gland, but with no real differences between any of the three uh, groups. 
Uh, when you multiply mean blood flow velocity by cross-sectional area, you can get an estimate of blood flow. Uh, at the moment, these are probably about 30% higher because of our cosine angle being a little bit above 67. We haven't had a chance to adjust these calculations yet. But you'll see that the blood flow is much, much lower in uh, heifers uh, than it is in older cows. Now, obviously, heifers have a lower level of milk production at that time, but it's not one-fifth the milk production of older cows. So this massive blood flow that's going to the udder has to go somewhere if it can't drain out through the milk vein. And what we believe is happening is it's uh, increasing hydrostatic capillary pressure, and we're getting transmural movement of fluid, uh, plasma uh, uh, components, less protein uh, across the capillary wall. Uh, if we look at utter edema score, which is really 0 to 10, but the highest, well, we did actually get one of 9. This is just the day before parturition. Uh, you'll see that uh, there's a reasonable negative association with vein area, i.e., as the vein area gets larger, the utter edema score uh, is less. So this can be explained by Starling forces. Uh, you probably all remember this uh, at some time in your veterinary degree. Uh, but when we have a capillary uh, uh, bed and we have a blood pressure coming down here on the arteriole side being drained on the venous side, if we get an increase in the intraluminal capillary pressure, either because mean arterial pressure is increased or more commonly because venous pressure is increased because there's an obstruction to flow, uh, we end up by this Starling equation right here causing extra fluid to move in the interstitial space. Initially, lymphatic flow increases to help uh, remove that fluid, uh, but after a certain while, that is no longer uh, effective. Uh, so we believe that uh, this is the mechanism for utter edema uh, in uh, heifer dairy cattle, um, is that uh, they have a markedly smaller cross-sectional area of the vein, but they have the same venous blood flow that must increase capillary pressure, that must increase flow to the interstitial space, and at some point, once lymphatic drainage uh, is maximized, uh, we will end up with edema. Uh, so we've got a lot more to analyze on this data. We have mean arterial pressure. Uh, we have uh, estrone sulfate as an index of permeability because that's been associated uh, with other edema formation. We also have progesterone concentrations. Preliminary analyses of those factors say that they're not associated. Uh, the only real strong predictor uh, is the cross-sectional area of the milk vein. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.